Um, but when we talk about being a leader, I think it's, and we talk about those quadrants I just showed you and the notion of operating range, um, it always starts with one thing, just one thing. And I think this is the thing that whenever I do kind of talks, whether it's to MBA students or to growth CEOs, I ask this question and unfortunately we're in a webinar, so it's a little hard uh, with the number of people we have on, on screen for me to bounce back and forth between a poll and this uh, and the presentation. But normally, if I could see you all, you know, and you were all in front of me, I would say one thing. I would say, raise your hand if you know your trademark strength. And typically, it doesn't matter who the room full of people is. When I ask that question, only about a third of the room puts up their hand. Um, sometimes I think that's false modesty, that everybody knows what they're great at and what their values are and what their uh, innate strengths are versus the skills they've acquired. But if it's false modesty, it's really rather wasted because if you want to be a leader and build an extraordinary company, you have to start not just with self-awareness, but I would say a unique perspective on what you're uniquely great at. As we talked about when we think about operating range, I don't expect that any leader, myself included, is great at everything in those four quadrants. What I expect is a great leader knows where you know, their core strength lies and knows how to complement themselves and build teams around them that, you know, uh, I would say our domain experts are, are equally outstanding at areas that they're not. And so when you navigate to different quadrants, again, your job as a leader is to navigate there and shine a lens on and, you know, roll up your sleeves and dive deep with the team. But that doesn't mean you're expected to be a specialist in everything. It does mean you need to know where you uniquely are great, you know, and what you need to complement yourself with in order to operate kind of uh, I would just say a team that both scales and a team that has, you know, uh, all the required trademark strengths to really build something outstanding. Uh, so to the extent that any of you have false modesty and you said if one asked that question, you would never raise your hand. I'm going to suggest to you that the next time somebody asks you what your trademark strengths are, you not only think about them lightly, but you think about them deeply and you're able to characterize yourself as a leader on three key dimensions. What you're innately gifted at, you know, and comes very easily to you your superpowers in terms of skills that you've built. And then number three, which we won't talk a lot about today, but is quite important, is your values. Um, because we are living a time, and we'll talk about that a little later towards the end of this presentation, people really expect us as leaders not only to be self-aware of what we're great at or not, but also increasingly, you know, our teams expect us uh, to espouse and be transparent about our own value system and the value system for our companies.